Mr. Aspar Kumabai for your altogether chivalrous introduction. <laughs> Please remind me to appoint you to my cabinet. <laughs>
and accepted conditionality is us, reducing public spending, increasing collection of taxes, liberalizing their economic relations, and even improving other areas of government. The IMF said that it will raise $456 billion for loans to those European countries. As part of the European Union program, the IMF chair has requested the Philippines to lend its money to its pool of funds. The IMF request for a loan has been granted by the Aquino administration and has served a controversy over two issues which I will answer summarily. First, is the loan constitutional since it was granted without congressional participation? Answer, under the Constitution, there is no legal obstacle to the loan. Second, is it wise to issue the loan considering our third world status? Answer, questions of wisdom in foreign policy should be addressed to President Aquino since when, as a country's loan spokesperson in foreign affairs, is privy to confidential information that is not available to Congress. Questions of legality have been raised because the loan was granted without information or notice to or the advice of Congress, particularly the Senate, which shares the foreign poli policy power with the President. But such questions, I humbly theorize, have no legal basis. The Constitution provides that the President may contract foreign loans on behalf of our Republic. The only limitation on the President's power is that he should have the prior concurrence of the Monetary Board and that his power is subject to such limitations as may be provided by law. At present, there is no such law that requires the President to consult Congress or the Senate. If the Senate wishes to participate in the foreign loan process, then it should pass a bill to that effect. Further, the Constitution provides that the central bank shall function as the central monetary authority. Accordingly, the Central Bank Act provides that the Monetary Board may authorize the Banco Central to grant loans to and receive loans from foreign banks and other foreign or international entities, both public and private. Perhaps the controversy over the Philippine loan to the IMF springs more from the trauma that the Philippines suffered during our country's own foreign debt crisis in the 1980s. The IMF provided bailout funds to our country, but it demanded painful structural adjustments such as budgetary cutbacks, trade liberalization, deregulation, and privatization. It is said that those structural adjustments irreversibly dislocated the economy of the Philippines. One of the IMF's conditions for the rescue loan that it extended to the Philippines was the automatic appropriations law. This law mandates that among budgetary expenditures, debt servicing should have priority allocation. Thus, the Philippines has allocated 20 to 25 percent of our national budget to debt servicing. Although the IMF has provided relief for states facing financial crisis, it needs to be emphasized that the IMF needs to walk a fine line. On the one hand, IMF should encourage the provision of funding that will be beneficial for both the borrower and the lender. On the other hand, the IMF should avoid moral hazard, meaning that a government that has fallen into a financial crisis and has been bailed out of the crisis is likely to behave more recklessly adopting inappropriate policies and overborrowing. This is the so-called moral hazard dilemma. At the beginning of 2000, some analysts already demonstrated that IMF patterns of lending respond to the geopolitical interests of the United States. Its dominant member. According to Professor Lisa Martin of Harvard, the Public Choice School has studied the IMF as a self-interested organization attempting to assert itself in the face of constant political demands from its powerful member states. We Filipinos must be aware that through the exercise of authority that is perceived as legitimate, especially because it has the veneer of science, the IMF and the World Bank may in fact be able to pursue agendas 
that have little relationship to the interest of either major donors or borrowers. Kaya tama lang na mag-ingat tayo dito sa IMF at ang World Bank na ito. Having issued this cautionary note about IMF, let me proceed to the most important question of all. Instead of lending money for European countries, why don't we use the money to help the poor in our own country? The answer is, we cannot do so. Under the new Central Bank Act, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas is mandated to maintain international reserves adequate to meet any foreseeable net demands for foreign currencies. Our country's international reserves are invested in accordance with the investment guidelines that only, only investment grade and highly rated financial instruments of non-residents should qualify. Kaya natin pwede gamitin ang pera ng ating Banko Central para ipamigay natin sa mga mahihirap. Kasi kailangan palagi nandyan ang pera niya o kaya nandoon sa investment grade and highly rated financial instruments of non-residents. There is a difference between national government money and BSP money. National government money comes from tax and non-tax revenues. BSP money comes from investment income, supervisory fees, and miscellaneous income. BSP international reserves form part of its total assets. Gross national reserves, or GIR, are external assets that are available to and controlled by monetary authorities and the central bank. These are comprised of monetary gold, foreign exchange assets, and other claims in foreign currencies. The DIR are held primarily for precautionary reasons. These reserves serve as a contingency buffer when there is insufficient domestic foreign exchange supply or when there is a foreign exchange shortage during market stresses. The corollary question is, why is the BNP, the BSP, lending to the IMF when 38% of the Philippine population are living below the poverty line. The answer is that it is the national government and not the BSP which is directly responsible for addressing poverty with resources coming from the budget. Furthermore, when the Philippines lends to the IMF, our loan indirectly supports the poor, particularly the OFWs. When we grant the loan to the IMF, the BSP level of international reserves will remain the same. Only the computation of the reserves will change. To allay the fears of our people, let me emphasize that there is no impact whatsoever on budget allocation of the national government. Let me repeat, there is no impact whatsoever on budget allocation of the national government. Under the law, the BSP can freely convert any of the assets in its international reserves into other assets. Lending to the IMF is just one form of BSP investment using its reserves. The IMF will pay interest on its loan from the Philippines at the SDR interest rate, which at present is about 12.12%. Another common question is, why are we not using our international reserves to either pay off the debts of our national government or to fund more infrastructure projects of the government? Again, the answer is the legal provision that our international reserves follow an investment guideline mandating that only investment grade and highly rated financial instruments of non-residents should qualify. Therefore, the BSP cannot lend part of its reserves to the national government to retire Philippine public debt, and the law prohibits the BSP from engaging in development banking or finance. There should be no anxiety that if we need the money we are lending to solve a problem in the balance of payments, we might not be able to get our money back in time. As long as the problem arises from the balance of payments, the IMF will return our loan. That is my speech. <laughs> ang dami pinagsasabi kasi ang problema hindi nagbabasa. <laughs> the main problem of certain public officials in our country is that they are illiterate. <laughs> that was the mess. That was the speech. But this is my message. After decades in public service in my own country, I've come to the considered conclusion 
that what is lacking in the Philippines is not natural resources or people or human resources. What is lacking is a sense of shared destiny. Palagi tayo mag away away We are a country divided within itself. Halimbawa, lahat ng tao ngayon gusto maging Chief Justice. Kaya <laughs> <laughs> po yun? Ang Chief Justice nakaupo lang siya sa isang sulo at nagbabasa siya ng mga isang metro kataas sa papeles hanggat sa he gets cross-eyed reading all those documents. Hilig ba nila yun? Pagkatapos, nung nanominate ako, isip ko tuloy, bakit gusto ba niya akong maninginig sa isang sulo? <laughs> Tapos, hindi ako makapagsalita. <laughs> Kaya pinaimbestiga ko talaga kung kalaban ko yung mga nanay. by a Nihan spirit that used to be so vibrant during the colonial times when we looked at ourselves as one, as one entity, when we remembered the message of Hemingway that when the bell calls, do not ask for whom it calls because it calls for thee. Dapat ganun sa ating bansa. Bakit ngayon eh, lahat ng tao gusto mag for Chief Justice o maging Presidente? Lahat ng mga tao na hindi dapat Presidente, ay nag-iisip na ngayon yung mga halimbawa mo, hindi nakakabasa Tagalog man o Ingles. Hindi nakapagtapos ng kolegyo. Kailanman hindi nakipag-usap sa mga taong edukado sa iba yung bansa. Gusto nila mga presidente sila. Ano kaya nang gagawin nila pag nakipag-usap sila sa mga heads of state doon? Huwag tutumanga sila. <laughs> Pagkatapos, kinukuha na lang sa propaganda. Palagi na lang marami ang litrato nila. Pero walang nangyayari sa ating bansa. Itong ating Chinese problem in Scarborough Shoal is a very complicated problem. And yet there are so many dimwits. There are millions of dimwits in this country who think that they know what the answer is. That's a very complicated, complex problem in international relations. Because not all that you see is the reality. We have to play this game, which is basically intellectual. Philippine leadership should always be intellectual in nature. Kasi hindi naman tayo matatangkat. Hindi tayo makapag-Olympics. Pero tunin na lang natin sa utak. Dapat ganun. We should always remember that this is our country. We don't have any other country in the rest of the whole world. Pagkatapos, sana huwag naman ako i-black propaganda pag hindi nila ako masagot. Lahat ng kalaban ko, inaamon ko mag-ibate tayo sa Plaza Miranda. Ayaw nila. Kaya inaamon ko ng suntukan, ayaw nila. This is the only country we shall ever we should we shall ever have. We should try and have a sense of shared destiny. We are Filipinos. The Filipinos are some of the most intelligent, most brilliant professionals in the world. We can com we can compete on any level, on a global level. But what do we do? We na black propaganda ako palagi. Kulang na lang ako eh. Demanda na may sex tape ako. <laughs> At malapit na rin siguro kami lumating doon. <laughs> Let us remember what the poet said. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my faith, I am the captain of my soul. Filipinos, come, help your country. Prove to the world that the Filipino is the master of his faith and the captain of his soul. Thank you very much. <laughs>